pillow. I just impulsively bought myself a lot of yarn at Joann's. There's four more of these. Because I want to make this sweater for Valentine's Day. This is the yarn I have. It is a big twist acrylic. 100% acrylic. I've never used this before, but I'm going to make a swatch. I have a retreat this weekend, so I'll be making a swatch in the car. And once we have a swatch, we can talk about if this will work. While I am knitting that swatch, I'm going to cover a few things Intro BB did not mention. I have linked the pattern I'm using in the description. It is a translated version, translated by Knitting Kiki, and I did the largest size, which was a European 40 slash 42. I used three skeins of the white yarn and one skein of red and this yarn worked beautifully. So, yep. Hi. The last time we talked was a week ago and I did make a swatch and I also made this little guy to practice the color work. This is the first time I've done color work. But I also just got a little bit carried away. Let me show you what I have. It is so cute. There are definitely some mistakes that just like don't. Don't look at me. Definitely don't look at that. The back of this is atrocious because I don't know how to carry color yet. And I'm afraid that it's ruining my tension. But for this, since it's so like bubbly anyways, I think, I think it'll be okay. I'm feeling really, really excited good. about this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I've been doing this pattern and then also how I did the heart swatch so this could be kind of like a tutorial and knit along together. Before I move on to the color work tutorial I realized that I haven't really said what I had done so far. So what I had done so far is that I cast on 83 stitches in a size 4 millimeter in the white yarn. I had done a one by one rib for the bottom for four centimeters and then I had started the brioche stitch. Now I said in that clip that I was going to do a tutorial for both the heart pattern and the brioche. I didn't do a tutorial for that. I forgot to film it. So I linked one that I used below. It's pretty straightforward and pretty helpful. But without further ado, let's get into the heart color. Hello. Work. So we are at the point of the pattern where we have done one row of hearts and I have made a lot of mistakes and we're not going to talk about them. Anyways, what I did last was I switched to my small boy needles. So what you will need is this little picture from the pattern. Uh, and this is going to tell you when to change colors. And then obviously you'll need your red yarn. To begin the color work, you're going to knit one row to set up, and then you will begin following the picture on the pattern. So all of this is done is stock and net, which means if you're on the back, you're going to purl. If you're on the front, you're going to knit. So the first thing I'm doing is purling three whites to follow those three white boxes on the picture, and then I will purl one red, and that will be all of the X's are the red. So I'm purling three white, purling one red, and then I am doing eight white, one red, eight white, one red. It's kind of a tongue twister for the rest of this row. As far as how I did the color work, I will link the TikTok tutorial that I used below, but essentially it's worked in two stitches where I would uh, put the red on the needle, but not knit it, and then it would carry the second stitch. I don't really know how to explain it, and I'm not convinced that this is the best way to do it, so if you know of other ways to do it, please leave those in the comments below. But that is what I used for the color work, and you can see in this shot how it looked in the back. Um, but yeah, this is my first time doing color work, so please let me know if there are other options. Here's our first little row. So for the second row, Basically we add two reds every, on both sides of every red we have right now. So these two stitches on either side to begin the little heart. So for this row, you work right up until before the stitch you did in the last row and you do three reds and then you do six whites, three reds, six whites, three reds, six whites. Um, and this begins the little V at the bottom of the heart. So we are one away from our little heart. So I'm going to make this guy Red, red, and red. Okay, so now we are on the back. This row is very similar to the row you've done right before. You're going to add a red right before and right after the three color work reds you already have to get you an equivalent of five reds and then you'll work 
five reds, four whites, five reds, four whites, all of this row. Okay, for the next row, you do six, but one in the middle so that we get this little, this little dip. We'll pick up one right before, do one, two, a white one, one, two, three. So you're doing six, but without this middle one. So like I mentioned, you're shooting for six red stitches in this row, but you're gonna have a white stitch in between. So three reds, one white, three reds, and then there'll be two white stitches in between every heart. This row is repeated on the back with purling, and then for the final row, all you do is add one white at the top of each little heart piece. I didn't film that row because I was losing daylight, but essentially you'll have one red on top of the three from the last row, and then you'll have three white in between, one red, four white, one red, three white, one red, four, run, three, one, four, one, three, one, four, until the end of your hearts. And then you should do one more row of the stockinette just in the white, and then you be can begin your brioche again. And that is the whole pattern. And then you have your beautiful hearts. Now that we have the color work all down, we can move on to more of the construction of the sweater. I knit the front and back panel with three rows of hearts. I debated how long I wanted this to be, but I thought that three rows of hearts would look really good. So with the last row of heart, I switched to brioche and then cast off basically immediately. I think I did one row of brioche in between between the last layer of hearts and the neckline. This is just a lot of me knitting and then something rather eventful happened, so I will let this BB tell you all about it. Hello, it's been a minute since we've talked. Uh, in the span since we've talked, I have completely finished one whole panel. Um, and I got a concussion. I don't really want to talk about it, but literally all I did was fight my Prius and the Prius won, so. Hi, it's me, Editing BB. I just think this clip is really funny. I start to talk about like how I did the neckline and my logic behind it and none of it makes sense. So basically what I did end up doing with my concussion brain was that I began to knit the front panel exactly as I had done the back panel. So I cast on 83 stitches. I did that one by one rib and then I did 20 rows of the brioche heart pattern, brioche, heart pattern, brioche, heart pattern, and then cast off for the neckline. Then I traveled across the country for Thanksgiving. I knit with my friends, I knit with my family, and then I was finally ready to tell you in some cohesive way about how I did the neckline. So I will let this BB explain that. Hello. It's been a minute since we've talked. I think the last time we talked, I was really, really concussed. concussed. So I don't exactly remember all of it or most of it but i have some updates this is the completed back panel i cast off 17 in the middle and then decreased for the shoulders i have started the neckline for the front piece and i'm going to show you how i did it and then we are going to sew those panels together and see if it fits over my head. So as I mentioned before, I had bound off 17 in the center of the sweater, and then I had 33 stitches on each shoulder panel, one on hold, and the other side I was working. So it was 33, 17, 33, and I was working the left side. So to do this, you're going to decrease to create that neck hole in the center. So you're always going to decrease when you are closest to the neck hole, never when you are closest to the shoulder, because you want to make that hole in the middle, essentially. So to do this on the left side, all you need to do is decrease when you're right next to the neck hole. So you're going to knit two together. I will leave a tutorial for that below if you don't know how to do that. Um, but you just work the back side completely normal, and then on the front side, you'll knit two together. I did this for eight centimeters. Um, the pattern was pretty loose on this, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the person who had done it before did it for eight centimeters, and that worked for me. Um, so yeah, that is the left side, and I will show you the right. On this side, I was decreasing from the right into the left. And on this side, I just knit. And when I get close to the neckline, I knit two together. So when I knit the back side again, I do no decreases. But when I knit from this side to here, 
I knit these last two stitches together. So I'm just gonna do that for this amount of rows and then basically I'll just get back to you once I have finished both of these and we can sew them together and see if it works. Sorry, I talk with my hands a lot. When I, you can't see my face. Okay, okay. <laughs> Once I had finished, I could sew those together. Hello, we're back in California. This is the sweater. The two panels look so good. Hold on. It's been a minute for me since we've talked. I know it was just like two seconds for you, but I connected these, flew back across the country, left my phone on an airplane, watched it fly back across the country without me, finished my first semester of grad school, knit a whole sleeve, and then promptly lost my four millimeter knitting needles. <laughs> We're gonna blame all of that losing stuff on my concussion. We have a single sleeve and the body panels. So I could connect the sleeve, knit another sleeve, connect them, and then pick up the neckline and finish. But I don't know how long to make the sleeve. I can't really tell how much blocking is gonna help me, how much I should keep knitting. I've decided to pick up the neckline because that will scrunch this in how it will actually lay. And then I can uh, pin the sleeve on and see if I need to add length. Unfortunately, the pattern is not super helpful for this. It says, pick up the stitches on the neck holder and as many stitches as you desire along the neckline. Now, if you've ever knit a sweater before, you know that there's actually a lot of math that goes into how many you pick up on the neckline to make it look even and fit correctly. So just as many as you desire is like, it's tough. And then I began to do some very tough math that I will spare you from because none of it really ended up mattering in the end anyway. Oh no, 15.5. I'd attempted to follow Knitting Kiki's advice and pick up 62 stitches around the neckline, but I was falling way short of that. And so I ended up doing, um, doing what the pattern said and picking up as many as I desired, essentially. Um, I tried to do it a little bit more systematically. I picked up three and skipped one around the whole neckline. What do we think? <laughs> I have half on, and right now it's at... 42? 40, 42. It's at 42. Sorry, just counted that. I am going to make sure that when I pick up for the back, it's also 42. I know I'm a good enough crafter. Crap, crap, a good enough crapper. <laughs> so close. A good enough crafter. What I was trying to say in that moment is that I am not one of those crafters where it has to be perfect. I usually just shoot for good enough. So if there's a small problem, I usually will not go back and fix it, is, is what I meant to say. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's my mentality. However, I do want it to not be like choking me in the front and then super loose in the back. It should be even ish enough i'm gonna shoot for 42 in the back as well and then we can see what we think so then i picked up for the rest of the neckline and i knitted it till it was about eight centimeters and then i cast off meanwhile i flew back home for christmas and finished all of the pieces so that they were ready for assembly hello we're almost done all we have to do is bind off these guys and attach the sleeve and i'll show you how i'm going to attach these to begin connecting everything, I grabbed my sleeve panel and I found the center of it and connected the center to the shoulder seam that I had created when I had previously connected front and back panels. Once the shoulders were connected, I could move on to the last final seam. I did this from the cuff of the sleeve, down the side of the sleeve, and then down the side of the sweater on both sides. And then finally, I did undo the collar and redo it off camera. I also blocked off camera Camera. So without further ado, here's what she came out looking like. Honestly, I have no notes. I love this sweater so much and I thought it was a great introduction into color work. If you would like to see me do some more crafts, feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time you're feeling crafty. 
Oh, and also I made a cookie version of this sweater back in December and I just got around to eating it. So here's some footage of me doing that in that chaos. All right, bye. I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's getting worse. <laughs> the end. <laughs>